The Tale of the Man Who Knew Too Much. Admittedly, every time I see this title, I always think of the comedy Bill Murray movie. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for the final episode of Supernatural Season 6, Episode 22, The Man Who Knew Too Much. This is the finale, the accumulation of everything that has kind of mixed, match, messy, come together into Season 6 with Castiel finally being able to unlock the gates of purgatory and get his souls, but he does have conflictions with Crowley. Also, he kind of breaks Sam's mind. This episode actually is a lot better than I thought it was, but thinking about it now, I do remember finding this episode quite good, and it is written by Eric Kripke. It's the last episode he ever wrote. Kind of curious as to how they got that. Kripke at this point was pretty much done. I think he was starting to work on Revolution. I do love the Sam element. It's probably my favorite part of this episode considering it starts off in a very kind of strange way with Sam running from the cops and coming into a building and not remembering who he is. And every time you think you have a grasp at what's going on with the situation, it just keeps changing and evolving and further expanding. It's further inceptioning itself outward to the point where you finally find out that Castiel actually broke Sam's mind after they found the Lovecraft lady after she had been killed by Crowley's goons and Castiel's like, well, I really can't deal with you guys right now. So for the sake of it, I am going to boink and break Sam's mind. So Sam is starting to figure out or trying to remember who he is, but through that, he's also having to come face to face with the parts of himself that he will need to face in order to fully gain control again. While this is going on, Castiel is pretty much sick and done with Crowley, so he boots Crowley out. And then the death that I actually missed the most, the one that I actually felt the worst about, is Balthazar. It's difficult to understand. Well, you've, you've always got little old me. Lies! Kill Joy. I'll always have you. Deception! Yeah. I liked Balthazar. Sure, he was kind of a sub-in for Gabriel. He actually was pretty good, and I am always surprised he got killed off this early. For some reason, I thought he died in season seven, but right when he came into the room with Castiel, I was like, oh, shit, this is where it happens. And the dialogue's pretty obvious with that as well. Also, side note, and I only just noticed this in the editing process, take a look at the wall behind Balthazar here. This is the bunker set, that's the spiral staircase. It's normal that film would reuse sets, but I can't believe that we actually were introduced to this bunker set well before the metal letters were even ever, ever introduced. There still are a couple of twists that this episode does. First off, Sam fights off the soulless version of himself in a fight in the forest inside his mind that I thought was actually really well done. You think I'm bad? Wait till you meet the other one. And then it comes to the point where he has to face his self that was in hell, the part that remembers everything. And I like the conversation, I like the dialogue here, cause it's a big decision for Sam to make. And I like how they both say, well, you know me. I know you, you're not strong enough. You know me, you know why. I'm not leaving my brother alone out there. It's very well written, I would say. And then when Dean and Bobby get to the building that Castiel's at, which they were given that information by Balthazar before he went and got summoned by Castiel and stabbed, and then all of a sudden, this giant wave of demons comes and hits the car. And that was a pretty cool effect. I like that. Turns out Crowley has joined sides with Raphael because, well, Castiel screwed him over. Castiel boots it, and then when Raphael and Crowley do the spell, nothing happens and when Castiel appears he essentially pulled at Ozymandias from Watchmen and he did it 15 minutes ago. He blows up Raphael, Crowley screws off and then it turns out that Castiel has a bit of a god complex. I'm your new god. So all the while before this has happened Sam has killed his demon self and he's starting to have a spaz attack and then this is the part that I always feel falls short. Somehow, with a brain that should be literally broken, literally on fire, filled with more PTSD than a thousand people could hold, Sam's able to drive, I would say, at least a 
sweet distance to this building to attempt to try and stab Castiel in the back, but that doesn't work. And in the end, the episode ends with Castiel saying, bow before me, I am your new god. And that's actually a really good freaking cliffhanger. And I gotta give this finale credit. It takes a friend, it takes a trusted friend, and it turns him into a villain from a pretty realistic perspective. I actually think that this twist is pretty solid. And it is at this point that I am remembering why. I am remembering why I continue to watch this show because stuff like this pulled me in. And now I've actually rewatched season six in its entirety. I have not done that since this all aired. I got halfway through and that's it. We're 100% gonna be moving into uncharted territory once we go into season seven for myself. But my final rating for this episode, I like Sam's story. I like the inside his own mind business that's going on. I do like the tension with Balthazar, the slowly and inevitably dipping into madness and power that Castiel goes through and how he ends with. But I do have a very large issue with Sam seemingly lacking issues with what he's done. Sure, you could have that kind of be a cliffhanger into season seven, but the fact that they don't seem to touch on that at all in this finale if sam was in the same building as all of this would happen if they had put him in the back of the car when all of this was going on that would have made a little bit more sense to me it would have put it at a near perfect level but the fact that he is able to cross a large amount of distance with whatever the fuck is going on inside his head it's a bit of a convenient stretch something like that of the ending of the Frontierland episode so in the end i am going to give the man who knew too much a five out of seven it is a pretty good finale i'll give it that it's not super stellar but it is a very intriguing one despite the fact that this season started off with me not giving a shit at all so in the end guys that's it we've made it we've made it to the end of season six i didn't think i could do it now apparently i got one more stinker to go through i will say i have been surprised of season six at least the latter half of it. The first half sucked, but the second half has definitely given me a little bit of a retrospective. I already sort of did have a renowned respect for Six, kind of out of necessity more so than anything else, especially with just how season 12 to 15 went. Like season six is leaps and bounds better than those four seasons. But because while there was some bad writing and some messy narrative going on in the season the production value is still really good for the most part and there is some solid love for the show here and just for some cool and nifty ideas all right here we go this finale was gorgeous in a bleak sort of way the dark streets with the song playing with fire in the background the burning candles all over bodipi's house standing in for the fires of hell where sam finally meets hell sam it also, it all, I also liked all the bits from the past they added to Sam's dreamscape, like John's wall of weird from season one and the storage locker full of Winchester past. And the Night Owl Hotel was in season six, episode five, Live Free or Twy Hard, where Solus Sam let Dean become a vampire, reminding that Dean was a victim of Sol Solus Sam, just like the bartender. Yeah, there's a lot of, of those elements that cor correlate into this dreamscape. It was really well put together. Power. Cass wants to achieve the greatest power of all. The brothers and the Bobby are trying to prevent him. I really like the development that the writers let Cass go through as a character in this season. For, from a simple, unquestioning angel soldier who mostly unknowingly provided humor, rose to a much more powerful yet troubled character who suddenly holds his own destiny in his hands and ultimately everyone else's. The dialogue scenes were between Cass and every other individual character in the last three episodes are worth way more than an angel civil war with special effects. Maybe it's a good thing in a way that the show didn't have enough budget for that because in return you get what has become rare now. A great story with a trope of actors who don't need any bombastic effects or drop drop uh, backdrops to fascinate the viewer to tell a great story. Great finale, 6 out of 7. I think the cliffhanger is really good. How can they possibly resolve the situation? How will the brothers and, and Bobby stop Castiel? Can they even stop Cass? Or will they bow down and worship Cass? Season 7 could have done a lot of things with Cass, but for some reason, it didn't. Ugh. Season 7 title, Monster of the Year. Ah! That was a lot of good points. You bring up all of the great points that 
just strange that they had this big thing for Castiel and it just disappears over because it's so it is a really nail biting biting cliffhanger the man who knew too much i like it it's a fine episode and a decent ending for season six i was never on board with Cass being a villain and the final shot left me in a weird place the first time i watched it i mostly feel indifferent towards this episode as it lacks the epicness of the previous and latter seasons or finales so i'm not going to waste any time talking about it. i want to sum up my thoughts for season six i will say that it did feel awkward it felt strange but i think that's what made it so enjoyable is it's like whoa this is something out of our comfort comfort zone like I didn't think we could go there especially after season five but it was able to take us there with that ending at the very least this season overall was pretty shaky to say the least although gotta say man they didn't they stick the landing Castiel his back against the wall after he scraped fought betrayed his way all through only to fail right at the finish line only to pull a sleight of hand somehow he definitely picked up from the brothers something he definitely picked up from the brothers and gains the throne I love the way he revealed the, where the souls went and the way Crowley, Crowley shits his pants. Cass has won, has no mercy left for his brother. Uh, good, uh, goodbye, Raphael. Even though this is techn techn technically a victory for Sam and Dean, it doesn't really feel like one. As Cass proclaims to be a good god, uh, new, the new god, bow before me. I, I guess since the real one is gone and deserted, Cass takes it upon himself to fill the role once again. Good intentions gone wrong. What a great, what a great and tragic antagonist for the next season. No way season seven can screw this up in one episode. Not, not even in the. Mm, I don't know what this is, man. You gotta spell check a little better. Stra Sam struggle with himself literally as he fights first to stay alive, having one final confrontation with Sola Sam. Then what I will name punish Sam to stay in one piece and to make it to Dean and Bobby. I don't know how he got there either. That's something I do question. Is considering he got just like absolutely just totally destroyed. He should have been just wrecked in jelly. I did enjoy The Man Who Knew Too Much as a finale. The stuff in Sam's head was fantastic when he sees the Sam that has no soul and the sound that remem remembers him of hell, and he must join with them to wake up. I'm always gutted Raphael and Castiel didn't have a fight a season uh, building up, uh, but then he kills him with a snap of Cass's finger. The, ca the cliffhanger was very call, always gutted it It was resolved in one Oh, very cool, it was gutted it was resolved in one episode in season seven five out of seven now i really do enjoy this episode i do like it re-watching it i was like wow i i am really invested in this ending and my god it makes me care about it want to care about a season that i know i won't the man i knew too much to me is the most underrated season finale in the show it's a tr real treat knowing kripke wrote it i honestly feel the content feel content about how it was the right amount of pacing with all the twists and turns and everyone's acting is on point it's the born identity kind of feel as sam regains memories of what he, and that we bring him in the war the worst mental state he's ever been in later on in season seven i love how castiel kills a raphael that obviously mirrors how lucifer killed him and him declaring himself as god definitely really sets up the tension and created my second season a second favorite season opener I think that's really fascinating if you have Lucifer and Michael as the big bads in season 5 so logically it makes sense that the escalated threat would be someone proclaiming godhood after the Judah Christian apocalypse was prevented. Season 7 is honestly one of my favorite seasons and while we have a bit to wait for those review reviews I'm excited to discuss them with you at the right time. Ah wow actually I'm kind of interested Joseph. This is the season that a lot of people don't like. It's better than the dab seasons, but I am interested now that you have such a high acclaim for it. I guess we're once we start season seven, it's going to be interesting conversations. Season one through five are genuine television masterpiece, but I do objectively enjoy season six and seven. They're not perfect, but at least they feel like true supernatural, and I like the storyline in season six. Do not apologize for the random comment. That is totally fine, Morbius fandom. <laughs> This is one of the weakest season finales in the series to me. I really hated how the writers literally tried to make the audience hate Castiel. To me, it doesn't work. I'm really surprised that Castiel deliberately breaks the wall inside Sam, even though I don't like the Soulless Sam storyline. It was re it was interesting how they use it in the episode by having Sam come face to face with the versions of himself, the Soulless version and the one that remembers Hell. Also, the woman he killed when he was Soulless. I almost forgot the actress who played Doom Duma in season 13 and 14 also played another character. I was shocked and saddened that Castiel killed Balthazar because he was one of the best things about this season. To me, it sucks he never appeared in season 13. I definitely would have loved to have seen him 
then again Gabrielle, uh, oh, and then him again, then Gabrielle, and was sad that Bobby's friend, Dr. Vieska, died. I wasn't surprised that Crowley decided to make a deal with Raphael. I really hated how the anticlimactic Raphael gets killed, but since Demon Barnes or Demore Barnes was no longer playing the role. I really didn't care that the woman who replaced him was just so bland. She, to me, she didn't really pull anything off the Demore dead, even though the season finale isn't great. It's not as horrible as season 12, 13, 14, 15. I actually did like the guy who played Raphael. I actually knew him from the unit, first and foremost. He died in that show, too. I can understand that conception. I, I didn't like it at first either, but watching how it's being put together, I do like where it's going. And I'm, I'm upset that we never got the full kind of realization of it if there was an idea for it and supernatural anything ter terrible that can happen will happen so the wall coming down in sam's head it was no surprise but the fact that it was Cass who did it is mind-blowing yeah that's perfect that's a perfect way to describe how i enjoyed the earlier supernatural but it was as soulless sam but no, but it leaves us with a really cool mystery in the first 10 minutes of what exactly was going on as Sam's trying to figure out the situation. The closer he gets to the truth, the more challenging it becomes as soulless Sam comes back around. I really like the scene the two versions of Sam get a conf final confrontation that normal Sam outsmarts his counterpart before blasting him away. The look on Jared's face during, the re during that realization he'd been tricked to when he realizes he's been shot never gets old. Then he, f uh, then he faces Hell Sam. And I felt like every part of the story was really well done and consistent. With Sam's character from season one to to, the, to this point, we also see Cass betray Crowley, kill Balthazar, who loses, whose loss is still felt every time. I see him die, and then confronted, and then confronted with Raphael. I think the episode was honestly very exciting and surprising all the way through. It at times calls back to Lucifer Rising without ripping off that episode. I'd give it a 5 out of 7. It starts off slow, but it gets you hooked and keeps you invested. However, it's not as strong as the original, in my opinion, as earlier seasons or finales, but it has enough to still be very satisfying. That was Kripke's last written episode and la probably last, possibly last contribution ever overall to the show. And it was. He never wrote another episode again. I'm, like, I'm happy that he wrote this one because it was really good. Man Who Knew Too Much is a decent episode. I like seeing Sam go on his journey while being trapped inside his mind, trying to discover who he was due to Castiel breaking the wall inside his noggin. Uh, not only that, I also enjoyed seeing him confront Soulless Counterpart as well as the one who remembers Hell. It was an unfortunate to discover that his Soulless Counterpart was actually the one who murdered the bartender, which, which fun fact, the actress comes back in season 1314. Uh, yeah. Uh, moving on, I thought throughout the episode that Crowley was great. He was funny and had some great one-liners, but there's one thing that I would like to know. How long did it exactly did it take for Crowley to convince Raphael to become his new partner? Yeah, obviously not a, li not a lot. Differing from that, we also have a few deaths in this episode, starting with the Doc. I still think she would have survived this season and eventually become an ally to the brothers, slipping them information about what would, could potentially kill the Le Leviathans since she was native to Purgatory. The next one is Balthazar. He was hands down the best angel of the season, and it was unfortunate it to see him die and lastly my favorite death scene being Raphael's. what a waste of a character in the same way that nikos couldn't buy eve as a villain i never bought Raphael as an archangel to me he was on par with Cass as an ordinary angel in my opinion zachariah acted as more of an archangel than Raphael ever was and to conclude my thoughts i want to say that i respect everyone's opinion but i wouldn't take you seriously if you said that the cliffhanger for this episode was good i'm sorry it wasn't when i rewatched season six the last episode i had to watch is the season seven premiere and that episode serves as a much better finale than this one interesting very interesting i like all your guys's takes on this it's been cool back and forth some people like it some people don't it's really cool to see that when Castiel absorbs the souls from purgatory and the man who knew too much where does his power rank god mode or on par with michael and lucifer I would maybe say maybe above Michael, but below God, it depends, right? We never really got a lot to see from this, but he's able to destroy Raphael with a flick of his finger. And if Michael and Lucifer couldn't even f flick each other's to death, you'd have to think that Castiel was more powerful than all of the Archangels, possibly maybe even combined. You flick too hard, damn it! Oh, and actually this comment came up in the community tab and I liked it so much I wanted to read it. Can anyone tell me why Eric Kripke came back to write the final episode when they immediately changed the pace in the narrative and created another villain in Season 7? Castiel could have been a good antagonist for the brothers who could have gone through a redemption in Season 8, for example. And of course, the problem with Season 6 is that Sarah Gamble has written too many arcs for different characters that don't connect in the finale. I don't like the, f the climax of the story because there isn't one. 
Yes, actually, there is a part of me that kind of wants to talk about the idea of what Castiel could have been if he had been a villain. So that might be a theory video we might do in in, in coming, uh, I don't know, maybe in a little while. But those are my thoughts about this season finale. Let's see what you guys have to say. All right, guys, that's it. We're done. Well, almost. Now we've got the season review to go through. So give me your guys' thoughts about the season as a whole. I'd just say one or two paragraphs, not long ones. I don't want tones, guys. Just kind of give me your concise thoughts about what you feel the season is, and I will read those off in the next review. Until then, guys, if you like the video, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. But as always, I'll see you guys next week.